Five seconds in, Gwiz does a hard snap, and so Gable reaches up and does a snap of his own with both hands, directs it to the left a little, and then attacks the right leg, pulling himself into a lefty high crotch. He then immediately comes up to his feet with it. This is smart for these heavier weights where you don't want to give your opponent a chance to sprawl and use their weight against you. He threatens to run the pike a little bit, where he would sit Gwiz to his butt, possibly getting a four feet to back. Gwiz adjusts, and so Gable changes direction, goes to a double, or in this case, just gets around behind. Gable does this change of direction from a single a lot. It's very commonly taught at the higher levels. Gwiz bails to his stomach, which is smart in freestyle. In folk style, in CAAs, you would stay on your feet, attack hands, try to get free before giving up a takedown. But in freestyle, this is a dangerous idea, as the guy behind will lock his hands and try to suplex you backwards for five. It's legal in freestyle, you could get injured, and five points is a lot to chance. So Gwiz bailing immediately is normal and very smart. This score is 2-0, Gable. Minute 20 to go in the first, Gwiz reaches with both hands, and so Gable snaps the hands down, making him misstep. Gwiz fakes a double, but he seems to fake a little too hard. Gable pulls the shoulders a tad to the left and then shoots on the right. A very quick fake to a shot, gets himself to a righty high crotch, starts driving double, goes to a body wrap, gets behind, and so Gwiz drops to his stomach again. These reshots from Gable you'll see all match. His speed and ability to adjust at this weight class is unparalleled. Score is 4-0, Gable. About 55 seconds to go in the first, Gwiz takes a random lefty high crotch. Looks like he wanted to go knee pull to a single, but Gable reacts perfectly, sprawls, and casually circles around for the takedown. Again, why I recommend so heavily that you set up your shot. But Gwiz's fakes are just giving up position for Gable, so he's likely running out of ideas at this point. Score is 6-0, Gable. Start of the second, Gwiz attempts a low leg on the right ankle with his left hand from a righty collar tie. He would attack the ankle with his left and then likely come up with it. This is a similar thing that David Taylor or Kyle Snyder does, but he's out of position. His head is a little too low, he didn't lower his hips or his level enough, so he's not able to pull himself out of the failed shot attempt like they would be able to. Fakes right, then attacks the left leg. He decides to let go of the leg, which is fine. Gwiz reacts hard to it. And so Gable snaps to the left and then attacks on the right single. Gable's ability to react, fake, change direction is just ridiculous. Something that everyone should be taking notes on, regardless of weight class. Gable lifts the left leg up, runs the pike a little bit. Gwiz is caught off balance as he tried to get a single of his own and falls to his butt, giving Gable the takedown. The ref did offer four feet to back, but the side judges decided on just two points, which is a good call. It didn't look like he broke back exposure. 8-0, Gable. A minute into the second, Gwiz fakes a righty single. Gable reshoots on the leg that Gwiz stepped with, likely not thinking it was going to lead to anything, but he gets a piece of it, so he decides to commit, lifts the leg up, and then cuts across one more time to get behind Gwiz, and so Gwiz goes to a quad pod to avoid being tossed. Gwiz does attempt a switch, which would likely lead to a high crotch and freestyle, but he loses the leg, and so Gable gets the final takedown, bringing the score to 10-0, which is a tech fall. Gable is just too quick, too reactive for heavyweights. Too many fakes and changes of direction, and that's what sets him into a different level. He'll use five setups for a shot, where most will commit after one or two, and that makes his attacks look effortless. This is what all wrestlers should be trying to emulate. This is honestly so impressive, especially for this weight class. Too often high-level wrestlers try to get by on just size, strength, speed. They miss out on the motion and setups, misdirections. You'll see this even at high-level matches like Nationals, NCAAs. The mind games, where you make someone think you're going somewhere and then you disappear and go somewhere else, is what makes it work. If you get good at that concept, you can beat anyone who's stronger and or faster than you. Gwiz could very well be stronger than Gable, but you wouldn't know it because Gable never lets Gwiz get to a position where he can show 